project, things are a little bit fishy. I saw these stickers on Amazon and I've seen other people do them on YouTube as well and I thought, yeah, I could play with those. So I started off by using one of my favorite trays and doing the edge in this lovely blue, which has become one of my favorite colors. And this is quite a multi-step project. And a little bit of clean up just around the edges, just to get any of the blue off that edge to keep it at the same line so that it won't show through the side when I've put the next layer on. And top it up just to that rim. I always spend quite a bit of time, you know, trying to get the bubbles out and then cleaning up. Try to keep as clean as possible, just because I'm fussy. <laughs> Although sometimes when I finish a project, you should see the state of my workspace. It is absolutely full of stuff. And before I can start another project the next day, I have to go in and tidy it up. So it gets quite untidy in there. Right. This is the next day, 24 hours later. Just putting in some clear resin. I must admit, I do like this tray. It's very sturdy. Yeah, and I just used the alcohol inks with a cocktail stick, smearing them around like this. But when I was watching the video back, I thought, why did I even bother doing that? Because, you know, the next step I do completely wipes this out. <laughs> I don't know, it was just nice to do. It's therapy, that's gonna be my excuse. Swishing around the nice colors in the clear resin. So yeah, therapy, we'll call it therapy. <laughs> Then I added drops of the alcohol inks because that was my intention to do drops like this and then squish it all around. Um, so yeah, thereby completely messing up what I did before, but hey, sometimes we, when you're in the moment and you're on a project, eh, the thought processes don't work that well. <laughs> And then just feathering out some of the colors to the edge. So that sits for a little cure and then come in with, they call this coarse gravel, but it's basically just sand. It's what you put in um, little cacti gardens. So it's very clean, it's perfect for things like this. And I used this coarse sand and then the fine sand, like the beach sand, if you like, because I wanted lots of contrasts. I wanted some sort of depth and what would look like movement. And I decided that this would be the way to go, create lots of different types of layers, just to make it more interesting, really, I suppose. Now I don't know why, but you can probably see this has millions of bubbles in it. And you know how I am about bubbles, the <laughs> bane of my life. And that's probably because the particles of sand are so tiny that they have a lot of air in them. I really don't know, but that's the only conclusion I come to. But the heat gun sorted all that out, so don't worry. 
Also when you make this, the bottom of it, where you got the coarse gravel, will be rough. You can see some of it's actually sticking out. What I do at the end of most of my projects is I stick some felt on the base so that one, they don't scratch any surfaces you might put them on and two, just to finish it and you know, make things like this look a little bit more tidy. But yeah, I thought that was quite a nice contrast with the two different kinds of sand. Yeah, it really was stuck on there. That was a challenge for my hands. <laughs> I like to tidy up the edges off camera just to get it ready for the next parts. Yeah, you can see all the stuff in the background from my previous project. That's what I mean about untidy. You know, I get in there and I just get started. That was from my hummingbird jars that I did last time. like the way this turned out you've got sort of contrast between the sand and what I'm going to call the water the resin is water yeah so I was quite happy with that I'm ready to start the next part Okay, so I've seen people do these fish on YouTube and they are super fiddly because you put down one fish sticker and they go in a sequence and then you put the tiniest amount of resin over and you wait for that to cure. Then you put the next sticker on and you put the next layer of resin and you repeat. Some of the fish like the blue one that has five layers and the reason I decided to do these fish on this tray is because it is a very deep tray and I didn't want to do the fish you know really really deep because it already weighs quite a bit and I didn't know if I would be able to place the fish as they are supposed to be done so I did it this way and as I say you don't see me put down the first layer of fish and plants because it was fiddly but you will see me putting the fish on a little bit further and despite me not doing it the way they're supposed to be done it actually did work out quite well because I did do layering I managed to get quite a few layers in there and it was still a pretty deep tray The reason that this project took such a long time was because you have to keep waiting for the resin to cure. This, I'm actually showing you how I did my fish. I just literally put them one on top of the other. I didn't put resin in between them. I just put down in whichever sequence they're supposed to go in. I just put them down literally one on top of the other. And I built them up like that. And let me tell you, this is not easy. This is really not easy, lining them up. I've watched some people do these. You know, they put down the first sticker 
and then they put on a layer of resin and they wait for that to dry. Then they come along and they just plop down the next layer and they put the resin on and then they come back and they plop down the next one and I'm like, wow, yeah, I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I think those people have had, first of all, they've probably got very steady hands. Mine do shake occasionally, it just depends on the day. All my hands are so stiff. Um, but yeah, to watch some of the other people doing it, it's, it's magic. And I knew I wouldn't be able to do it. So that's why I built mine up one on top of the other without the resin layers between the layers of each fish, if you see what I mean. But I did manage to create, you know, depth and perception. It worked out quite well, I was very pleased. As I said, this this tray really is very deep to start with. And as you can see, once you get these things stuck down, they are stuck down. <laughs> And that was something else that concerned me was if I'd done it the way you're supposed to do it, you know, sticker first, then resin, then sticker first, then resin. I was a little bit concerned that when I placed the second fish, if it would move at all, at least by putting each sticker down the way I'm doing it on top of the one before, there's no way the stickers were going to separate because they were stuck together in that sequence. So there were a lot of reasons why I did it this way. And I think if I did it again, I would still go with doing it this way. building it up layer by layer it really did work you can see the fish that are under the first set of leaves and plants and things and lily pads and then as you build up you can see how the depth as you look down on the tray how that works they're very clever these stickers I must admit and that was our fishy project for today